Okay, well, welcome everyone to uh, the AI Research Bytes. Uh, this series of short and informative talks showcase cutting edge research work from ServiceNow AI Research Team. The AI Research Bytes are open to everyone, um, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast paced AI research community. Today's session features a 15 minute talk from Agathe Barin. Uh, on responsible AI throughout the LLM supply chain and will be followed by a 10 minute Q&A. As usual, please make sure to use uh, the Zoom Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to uh, ask your questions. Um, today, uh, we have Agathe. Agathe is a visiting researcher at ServiceNow and a postdoctoral researcher at the Delft University of Technology in the, in the Netherlands, as well as the University of Trento in Italy. Her research lies at the intersection of AI, human-computer interaction, and policy. She aims to foster responsible AI by better character characterizing its principle and by contributing guidelines and tools for its operationalization. Up to you, Agathe. Thank you, Fanny, for the introduction. And uh, let me get directly into my research, which was about shifting our view on AI and especially not seeing AI as simple systems, but as complex supply chains and understanding the implications this has for human computer interaction topics such as AI trust, transparency, literacy and explainability. But before that, let me just show the safe harbor statement. Uh, it's just to remind all of us that the content of this presentation is only to the best of my knowledge. So why are we focusing on AI? Probably I don't need to say too much about this uh, today, but uh, while well, all of us know that AI can have benefits, for instance, in the context of ServiceNow, it can serve to automate low risk routing tasks or to augment productivity. You can think of a customer service agent who would have to summarize their conversation with a customer and they could use, for instance, an AI system doing speech to text to translation faster. But uh, despite AI being beneficial, it can also be harmful in some cases. Um, for instance, the outputs of large language models can be wrong, and this might cause issues such as dis disinformation or deepfakes, or they might also be unfair outputs. In the case of the customer service agent and this AI system, for instance, the outputs of the transcription could be not only wrong, but maybe offensive or unfair. And if we don't look only at the outputs of the AI system or the large language model, but also at its development, usually it requires a lot of data and uh, the, the collection process of the data might be harmful. For instance, if you think of privacy or copyright infringement, it can also be harmful for the annotators who label the data and might have poor labor conditions, for instance. And so because AI can be beneficial, but also harmful, there are now a lot of uh, research efforts or other efforts that are done uh, around the responsible AI development. Especially uh, we can think of regulations and standards that are now put in place. For instance, in the European Union, we have the AI Act that was recently signed and that tries to mitigate some of the harms I mentioned. Uh, within the we also have more and more research. You might have heard of terms like uh, machine learning fairness or machine learning explainability that are also trying to tackle some of these harms. And on, in the industry, uh, there are also different types of efforts, especially responsible AI guidelines and human-centered AI principles uh, that you might have heard of. Um, and we can see overall the number of uh, responsible AI efforts is increasing across organizations. So we have all these uh, concepts, which are more theoretical and abstract, especially these principles and these regulations. And in my research, I try to understand how to go from these principles to their operationalization. So how can we ensure responsible AI in practice and whether current responsible AI efforts are sufficient or not yet? But so what are actually current responsible AI efforts exactly? Um, so if we ask what is AI or how does AI work, usually you can find this kind of uh, pictures, workflows that I'm showing on the slide uh, from the companies that also provide these responsible AI guidelines. And to summarize what it shows, overall it shows that we need a workflow with data sets and this data set is used to train uh, a model. 
And then you have to, well, evaluate and potentially reiterate on the model, retrain it, fine tune it. And then you can use the final model to infer new predictions on new data. And so because the workflow of AI, its representation is this way, centered around the model, uh, current efforts for so rather model-centric. Um, if we look at the main stakeholders for responsible AI, it's especially the developers of the AI systems. And for them, we have the responsible AI guidelines that I mentioned. And there is also work, for instance, unfairness mitigation methods that can support them uh, in correcting the outputs of the AI systems. Uh, and the second stakeholder would be the model user. So those who actually use the outputs of the AI system to make uh, to make, make decisions. And for them, we have work such as explainability methods and also transparency tools that can support them uh, in operationalizing responsible AI questions. And there are a few other stakeholders, especially the decision subjects. So once the user makes a decision with the outputs of the AI system, and there are works especially on the design of uh, appropriate trust for these subjects so that they rely on the AI decisions when uh, meaningful and otherwise them. And so uh, that research, but what I noticed at the, uh, the beginning of my research visits is that there might actually be more stakeholders, especially in the context of large language models. Uh, well, they, these require a lot of uh, different stakeholders to develop them and many components. And so I was wondering whether the current research is uh, sufficient to operationalize responsible AI. Uh, when I talk about stakeholders uh, that are might be additional to those I mentioned already, um, I will give you a few examples of what I mean. So for instance, when we want to go from the fine-tuned model to the user of the model, there are a few more steps. For instance, we need to wrap the model in an application and then deploy the state. And before even getting to this model, we need data sets and maybe a foundational model on the data set. And again, we have other potentially organizations working on this. And within all these organizations, there are different types of individuals, uh, some who are focusing on the engineering aspects, others on the business or the user experience, governance aspects, etc. And there are even many more stakeholders that I won't have time to mention. But so to summarize uh, what I've been saying until now, um, so I'm saying that in my research, I aim at mitigating the harms that AI can cause using responsible AI concepts. And I saw that current efforts are primarily model centric, but I also noticed that there are actually potentially many more stakeholders in the AI supply chain. And so my question was, uh, how to account for all these stakeholders, um, if the current efforts are not sufficient. So. To answer this question, the first step I took was to actually go and delve into the literature to understand what are the current efforts uh, more specifically. And we found three main ideas there. Uh, the first one, uh, so these are research efforts that are focusing on concepts such as trust, literacy, transparency, and explainability. And they are very insightful frameworks to start the research, but we noticed that they focus only on the narrow set of stakeholders compared to all those that I mentioned before. Especially, for instance, if we look at the AI Act, it talks about the developers and the deployers of the AI systems, but it doesn't really specify who is who and how they could operationalize all these concepts. The second uh, line of research uh, is focusing on more specific activities within the AI supply chain, so it's specific workflows. And they're also very insightful because they uh, identify more limitations of current works and harms, but they are not specific to responsible AI concepts, actually. And the last line of work is actually uh, focusing on the broader AI supply chain and describing this supply chain, which is again, very insightful, providing a more comprehensive understanding of this supply chain, but uh, it doesn't guide uh, practitioners towards responsible AI concepts. So that's actually what I wanted to do in my research. Specifically, so I wanted to review responsible AI efforts under this new supply chain lens and revise existing frameworks and then also provide research opportunities to operationalize responsible AI. And how did I actually do that? Um, so we chose to take uh, 
empirical qualitative uh, study approach. Um, and so we actually collected data from several sources. First, we conducted 71 semi-structured interviews all across the supply chain. So we talked to people within uh, 11 different organizations uh, along one supply chain. Uh, and we also gave them a few questionnaires. Then we also observe teams that are working specifically on responsible AI concepts such as AI transparency. And we also looked into the documentation that is shared uh, within or across organizations. And finally, we gave a few uh, presentations to receive early feedbacks on our findings. And so I won't actually have time to present all of the findings, but now I'm going to try and highlight a few of them. I will start with findings that relate to uh, trust and AI. So typically, if we look at uh, psychology literature, they model trust in the way I'm showing on the slide. So they talk about a truster who trusts a trustee to conduct an activity, and they have a positive expectation if this activity is conducted, but they can be actually vulnerable if it is not conducted. And there are several types of trust factors that impact uh, this relation between the truster and the trustee. Uh, and currently in the responsible AI research, when people talk about trust, they typically talk about a model user, sometimes a decision subject, who would be trusting the AI system. But what we found within our uh, interviews is that actually trust relations across the supply chain are much more complex than this. Um, we found that there are many more trustors and trustees and that they can be of different nature. And we also found that uh, the trust is a typically bi-directional. So a truster can also be a trustee and a trustee can be a truster. So let me give an example. When we talk about uh, user trusting the AI system, actually we also found that the user might trust the deployer of the AI system or the provider. And on the other side, we found that the provider might also have to trust the deployer and the users to, well, use the system appropriately and not uh, cause any harm, for instance. We also found that trust factors are much more complex than those uh, that are studied currently. And especially, we found that trust relations uh, impact other trust relations. So for instance, when we talk about a user trusting an AI system, we found that this trust relation in, is often impacted by the trust relation between the user and the deployer of the AI system itself. So if they trust the deployer, they might trust the AI system uh, more, actually. This is illustrated in one quote from one of our participants who said that because the employees trust the deployer organization, then they trust the implementation of the AI system and that the organization will re responsibly use it. So that, these are example results for the trust uh, in AI topic. And uh, if you want more information, you can scan the QR code that I'm showing here. I'll now go into the results around AI transparency, explainability, and literacy. So the common topic uh, among all these concepts is overall information, information needs. And we found actually that the information needs across the supply chain are really diverse, and especially that they depend on the stakeholders we're talking about. For instance, uh, we found that the developers of the, the AI systems might need more technical implementation details about the AI system, maybe about the foundation models, for instance. Whereas, uh, and they also actually need uh, potentially information about the requirements um, for the AI system that they are implementing. Instead, the users of the AI system of the LLM might need other types of information, just simply knowing that an AI system is used in a specific use case or knowing about the basic functioning of any kind of AI system in general. And finally, we found that the adopters of AI systems need to know about the, uh, well, how to actually use the AI system properly uh, if they actually want to adopt it. And here we have one quote from a participant uh, who illustrates this and said that uh, the developer said about the adopter that they are uh, putting together model cards so that customers can understand which use cases they should use uh, the AI system for. And that serves to uh, bring misuse cases down. 
So again, we have many more results and you can find them uh, at the QR code where we have the publication we wrote about this. What are the implications of, uh, well, all these results for AI trust, transparency, literacy, and explainability? Um, so first, they are very useful to develop uh, study frameworks that are more structured. Uh, for instance, organizing the studies based on the different stakeholders that we want to support and the different needs that they have. They are also useful as methodological insights. For instance, we noticed that our study participants don't all understand in the same manner the topics of transparency or explainability. So it might not always be the most appropriate terminology to use when we uh, inquire about this. And instead, we might want to talk about information needs or actually prompt them to clarify these uh, terms first. Of course, the results also have implications for building tools that would be uh, helping stakeholders to operationalize responsible AI. And especially, uh, this shows that we should uh, personalize the tools to each of the stakeholders we want to uh, support. Finally, um, this research also bears implications for future policies and regulations and guidelines. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that, for instance, in the AI Act, we talk only about developers and uh, deployers. And this is, for instance, the case for trust or for transparency. And with our results, we could specify further what these developers and deployers need, and we could also specify what other stakeholders need towards responsible AI. So thank you for your attention. This was uh, the yeah, gist of the results that we got uh, for our research. And let me just remind you of the main points. We found that AI is the product of a supply chain with very, really many diverse stakeholders. And for all of these stakeholders, AI trust, transparency, explainability, and literacy are important. We also found that uh, efforts on AI trust, transparency, explainability, and literacy merits to be empirically studied and revised to be appropriately operationalized. And finally, we found that to do so, the needs uh, of the different stakeholders uh, would have to be, uh, well, looked into and adapted, personalized uh, to support them. So thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions now.